This is a continuation from our previous videos. So in this question, we're obviously familiar with the graph, but let's orient ourselves anyways. On the x-axis, we have the pH. On the y-axis, we have the bicarb, and these are the three lines of carbon dioxide. Now, the question says, from the above graph, use letters A to E to answer the following. Okay? Immediately after a dog's kidneys were surgically removed, his arterial pH, bicarb, and PCO to correspond to the point N on the graph. So it was normal. The dog is then artificially ventilated for 30 minutes at 50% of his normal respiratory minute vo volume. To what point on the graph will the dog's bicarb and pH values move? Now, after we remove the dog's uh, organs, we are going to ventilate it for 30 minutes. But we are ventilating at 50% of the normal respiratory minute volume. So that means the, the dog, it's a dog, right? Yes. The dog is going to be more and more acidotic, right? It, there's going to be more acidosis because there is going to be more accumulation of carbon dioxide. Just by that fact, I can rule some of the answers out. So this is where I am. In this direction, we have pH being increased. In this direction, we have pH being decreased. So this we're going to rule out because the pH is going to decrease because of 50% uh, decrease in normal respiratory minute volume. Now, so choice C is out of the answer. Choice E is out of the answer. Now we have to deal with A, B, and D. So now we know that this is the line we are going to have PCO2 about 80 and we have to pick whether it's A, B or D. Now look at the three values on this line. D has a higher bicarb than B. A has a lower bicarb than B. But this is an instantaneous process. Bicarb or the changes of bicarb to compensate is a delayed process. So we don't have any time for delay in 30 minutes, so the answer is going to be B. So the question is to what point on the graph will the dog's bicarb and pH values move? It is going to move to point B. So let's go ahead and do the next question. In the next question it says that in non-compensated respiratory acidosis, okay, so let's draw our little cube. I've shown you that I love drawing the cubes because it makes things so much simpler. And I know this is respiratory acidosis, respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis. This is metabolic acidosis and metabolic alka. Okay, so this says that in a non compensated respiratory acidosis, so we're talking about this area and it's non-compensated, so let's say it's somewhere over here. The usual cause is chronic hyperventilation. When we hyperventilate, what happens to our oxygen? Our oxygen increase and our carbon dioxide drop. Because our carbon dioxide drop, our pH is going to increase. So in respiratory acidosis and hyperventilation does not go together, so that is not a viable answer. Mm. In non-compensated respiratory acidosis, the pH of blood may be normal. Respiratory acidosis, pH of blood is not going to be normal because that change happens immediately, right? So that is also not the answer. Let's see choice number C. Blood PCO2 will be elevated. Sure. In respiratory acidosis, blood PCO2 is going to be elevated. See how E has the exact same until here, and then things change. And, okay, so let's read C first. Blood PCO2 will be elevated and total carbon dioxide will be elevated. Sure, that seems like a good option. Let's jump to E just to see what they're talking about here. Blood PCO2 will be elevated. Total carbon dioxide will be low. Why? It doesn't make any sense. If the blood CO2 is increased, partial carbon dioxide is going to increase, that's going to impact the total carbon dioxide. So that is not a viable option. So we're left with choice D. Let's see what choice D says. Blood PCO2 will be low? Absolutely not. So I'm not even interested in reading the rest. Um, both blood PCO2, which is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, and partial pressure of carbon dioxide is the carbon dioxide dissolved in the plasma, will be elevated along with the total carbon dioxide is going to be elevated because some of the carbon dioxide, there's three ways carbon dioxide really uh, travels in our blood. One is as bicarb, 
one is dissolved in the plasma and one is bound to the N terminus of the hemoglobin. So um, there's three ways, but if the partial pressure of carbon dioxide decreases, the total carbon dioxide is going to decrease. If the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide is increased, the total carbon dioxide is going to be increased. They go hand in hand. Okay, so that is question number two. So let's do question number three. In question number three, it says, which arrow on the graph could represent the change in the status of an individual with metabolic acidosis who was then given an intravenous injection of sodium bicarb? So this patient initially had metabolic acidosis and then bicarb was given. So which of the, from which point to which point will the graph move? Now I'm going to go to my original graph and I'm going to divide my quadrant which makes my job a lot more easier. So I know this is respiratory acidosis, this is respiratory alkalosis, this is metabolic acidosis, and this is metabolic alkalosis. I'm drawing them small because that's where the action is, right? And I know that this patient, um, you know, any, any other number, so 5 to 7, 5 to 6, I'm going to rule those out. Those are not viable options because we're dealing with the move from metabolic acidosis to somewhere. So it's going to be in this box, okay? And in this box, we see four numbers. There is one here, there is two here, there is four here, and there is three here. Now, so we gave this person, we gave this person, and you also have to look at the arrows. See, some arrows uh, can go, you know, both ways, and some arrows is only in one direction. So that's also very important. So when we gave this person bicarb, their bicarb should increase. Absolutely, it should increase. The bicarb increase should also increase their uh, pH, right? So those two things, we're going to look for increased bicarb. And we're going to look for increased pH, but we're going to in look for increased bicarb first. Why? Because that happens for sure, and I think it also makes uh, thinking about this question easier. So let's look at option one to two, uh, ch choice A, points one to two. One to two, not only the pH decreases, the bicarb also decreases. See the pH also decreasing, the bicarb also decreasing. So A, not a viable option. Choice B. 1 to 3. 1 to 3, the bicarb is dropping, the pH is increasing, but the bicarb is dropping. The bicarb is not dropping, the bicarb is increasing. So that is not also a viable answer. Choice C, 1 to 4, the pH is increasing, the bicarb is increasing. Bingo, that's our answer. But let's see, we always need to see the other options because sometimes there is a better answer than the one that you have picked. So we don't want to just you know, not look at the other options. You always should look at other options. So choice D, five to six. Five to six doesn't even deal with this box, out. Choice E, five to seven doesn't deal with that box, out. So our best answer is going to be choice C. Now let's move on to the next question. And the next question says that partially compensated metabolic alkalosis would be characterized by which of the following? Okay, and then do keep in mind that there's all of the above at the end. So we're talking about, okay, let's draw a box. I love drawing the box because, you know, sometimes things miss my mind. And in making it physical, drawing it out, I eliminate or I decrease my silly mistakes, I would say. So we are in metabolic alkalosis. So I know this is respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, metabolic acidosis, and metabolic alkalosis. So I know we're dealing with this box. Okay, so now we have, they're saying that partially compensated metabolic alkalosis would be characterized by, if it's metabolic, if it's, par, if it's partially comp compensated metabolic alkalosis, the pH is still going to be higher than normal. So the pH is still going to be greater than 7.4. So B is a viable option. What about choice A? If it's partially compensated metabolic alkalosis, then we would want to increase the level of carbon dioxide greater than normal. So that's what's showing here in choice A. So choice A is also a viable option. Oh, two viable options. So if choice C is correct, then we can pick all of the above. So choice C says the bicarb is greater than 24. In metabolic alkalosis, which is partially compensated, obviously the bicarb is going to be greater than 24, and that's a relief because now 
I can pick choice D because that's my answer all of the above. Okay, so we're going to master this topic and we're going to keep going. All right, so we have another graph here. Question number five says, which point on the graph would most likely represent the systemic arterial blood of a mountain climber after several weeks at high altitude? So what happens when a patient, when a person goes to high altitude? They hyperventilate. And when they hyperventilate, there is going to be respiratory alkalosis. So this is respiratory acidosis and this is respiratory alkalosis. And if you are in the mountain for three or four weeks, the chances are your pH is going to normalize or you're going to be fully compensated, right? Because you have been there for a while. So the question says that which point on the above graph would most likely represent the systemic arterial blood of a mountain climber after several weeks at high altitude? So first of all, we, I'm going to look somewhere in this area. I'm going to look for some someone like this who has met our you know who has reached our normal value so for me the obvious choice is that it's going to be b okay so time to do the next question so what do we have next next it says that analysis of an arterial blood from a patient provides the following data ph is going to be acidotic carbon dioxide is going to be low and bicarb is going to be low as well. You can conclude from this information that the individual has. So before we even look at the option, we have to interpret what's going on. So obviously this is going to be, the pH is going to make it acidosis, okay? And then we have uh, carbon dioxide to be low, okay? So who's causing, causing the acidosis then? It must be metabolic metabolic acidosis okay because carbon dioxide is trying to compensate uh, compensate for the uh, for the for the low pH by getting rid of carbon dioxide and so also has it been able to reach a pH value which is normal absolutely not so this is going to be partially partially compensated metabolic acidosis. So let's see if I can find that from the option. So we can see that choice D, partially compensated metabolic acidosis, is the right answer in this particular scenario. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. The next question says that in which of the following would you expect plasma bicarb to be above normal? Okay, so when would plasma bicarb to be above normal? So let's draw a little box. We know that this is respiratory acidosis, respiratory metabolic acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, and metabolic alkalosis. So the question says, uh, in which of the following would you expect plasma bicarb to be above normal? So bicarb would be above nor normal in these two scenarios, right? Respiratory acidosis and metabolic alkalosis. So let's see. Uncompensated respiratory acidosis, sure. Completely compensated respiratory acidosis, sure. So A and B are possible answers. Uncompensated metabolic alkalosis, sure, that's also an answer. Uncompensated respiratory alkalosis, no, that can be the answer. So in this particular scenario, choice A, B, and C, all of them is going to have above normal plasma bicarb. Now, question number eight, the last one, it says, in which of the following would you expect systemic arterial carbon dioxide to be below normal? Okay, so when do we have uh, carbon dioxide below normal? When, you know, maybe we are having metabolic acidosis that has been compensated okay uh, so choice a is a possible answer incompletely compensated so it's not completely compensated so metabolic acidosis we would try to compensate for it by getting rid of carbon dioxide so a is a possible answer b uncompensated respiratory acidosis no that cannot be c Uncompensated respiratory alkalosis? Yes. So the answers are going to be A and C.